Hey guys and welcome back to another IndieTips.com tutorial, daily notebook friendly filmmaking tips, so go and check out that site. In the previous grading video we had a look at how you can grade your video using the basic tools in Adobe After Effects. Now we're going to have a look at how to grade your video using Magic Bullet Looks. As I stated on the previous video, I don't think this is going to be a tutorial as such, more of a rundown and this is how I do it. As I'm kind of like Daredevil's anti-hero Echo who learns by watching people, hopefully this may help you too. So Magic Bullet Looks is a plugin from Red Giant and it can be used with a number of programs, After Effects, Premiere, even little old Sony Vegas. It goes for around $400, however, filmmakers like Philip Bloom often post 20% off vouchers from their Twitter, so keep an eye out for that. We're in After Effects and we are going to apply Magic Bullet Looks to our footage and when we click Edit, it loads up in its own separate window. This is our interface, our workstation and it almost looks like a separate piece of software. We have six different panels. We have our scopes, the preview monitor, the control panel, the tools library, the tool chain and the looks library. If you watched the first video in this tutorial series, you may already be familiar with the scopes. If you remember, these are diagrams and graphs which can help us correctly balance our image or help us correctly grade. The only thing missing from this is uh, the Luma waveform and I'm not too sure why they haven't put that in, but anyway. So here we have the RGB parade, red, green and blue. You read this parade from left to right as you do with your image and the elements inside each channel correspond with the colors found in your image. The bottom of the graph represents where the clean blacks will be and the top represents where the clean whites will be. If the channels for your image extends to both of these you should have a neutral, balanced and properly exposed image. And remember if there is a straight horizontal line it means you have some blown out highlights which can't be recovered or shadows. When one colour starts to elevate the other, that's when your image is going to start displaying more colour values of that specific channel than the other. Useful for when you're creating a warm or cool colour cast, like this one. We're going for a warm picture. This is the slice graph and this allows you to sample only a slice of the image and you can choose which line you want to sample by sliding down this yellow triangle back and forth. Like the RGB parade, it reads left to right and of all of the grading books or articles I've read online, not one has really gone in depth about this tool and I've never found reason to it. I'm sure it's used higher up in the food chain, but for us guys just sticking up videos on YouTube, I'm sure you're not going to need use for it. This is the vector scope. Like the RGB parade, this can be found in Premiere like we talked about in the first tutorial. This essentially portions the colour found in your video out on the colour wheel. If you follow IndieTips.com, we had a post the other day about the colour wheel. Uh, you have red, green, blue, then cyan, yellow and magenta. If you're trying to keep a certain color scheme or color palette, this will be really useful in identifying stray colors. You might be thinking, whoa, hang on, there's some yellow over there. There's no yellow in my color palette. You'll be able to identify it and remove it. The hue lightness, as you may have guessed, displays the brightness of the colors in your image. And here we have memory colors, another function I rarely use. Memory colors confirm that key signature colors are on target, so skin, sky, and so on. They are our scopes. Now we can start grading our image. So this is the looks library. Here you can drag on a preset onto your file from a number of different options, television, films. Now I recommend that you don't do that. I see so many videos on YouTube that people have just used the custom preset for the film and it looks terrible. Use a custom preset and build upon it by all means, but just don't drag a preset and keep it as it is. As I said in the previous video, every shot is different. My footage is going to look completely different to yours. Different lighting, different color temperature, the actor will have a different skin tone. So using a pre-made preset off the bat isn't going to make your footage look that good as that preset was most likely conformed for another shot. Here we have our tool chain. Each section corresponds with a different aspect of the production or the camera. Running from the subject, where on set you might have a light on your talent, so you can place a spot on your talent here. Or the mat, where you could have a gradient filter slid between your mat box and the lens. And then in post-production, you can add your color correction. In the tools panel, we have tools which again correspond to the different aspects of the production which works with the tool chain. If I want this film grain, double click, it appears on the post channel of the chain. You may notice that some tools, such as the curves, appear multiple times. Well, depending on which tool you use, it may alter your footage in a different manner. Here we have the curves which is applied to the camera. This would be like setting the contrast at a certain setting 
in your 5D. Now if we switch over to post and it acts as if the colorist has applied curves to the footage rather than having an organic curve from your camera. The best way to learn the tools is to go out and shoot something then mess around with them. It'd be completely redundant for me to explain how they work with my shot when that setting and that tool may completely work differently with your shot. I could teach you how to sculpt but it is on your creativity to create the sculpture. So now I'll create the grid from scratch so you can watch my process and hopefully learn something from it again. And as always with all of my tutorial videos, this isn't the standard. It's a personal preference what works best for me. It may not work best for you. So accustomed to it. Okay, so this is where my speaking starts to die down. So we're going to drag on some color contrast first. We'll start from the subject, working our way back as you would on the set. The look I'm going for is a very summer-like. This is probably my favorite shot I've ever pulled off. Uh, we were testing out the glide cam as well as shooting a test episode for a festival we were invited to back in October for Grimm, but we couldn't end up making it because I was ill and it buggered up the whole production schedule. But uh, we tested out the glide cam, and as we went around the corner, uh, the the sun was uh, setting, and it just hit the sense at the right time, and it really gave us like the yes, this is what we do. This this is why we're in the middle of nowhere filming. Add some pop, which is uh, kind of like an awesome sharpening tool. You can see it just sharpening a tiny bit. You don't want to over amplify it like that. So it starts look, looking unrealistic. And that's, that's the look you're going for. Alright, so onto the mat. And we're going to add a gradient. So as you can see, if we go up here, we got a nice horizontal line. And that's because. As always with the 5D, stuff gets blown out so easy. So we're going to add the gradient. Let's bring it up. I'm going to turn the strength all the way down. I'm going to give it there we go. A nice blue like sky. Likely that we might have to alter this a little bit later. Um, let's give it a vignette. You can also alter these controls by doing this. It's a lot faster. I'm trying to get it to uh, a position setting. Well, the image is starting to come to life. From where we were. And let's just up the brightness a tiny bit of the midtones. And now let's start to bring in a grade. So we'll use the freeway tool. Um, as you may already know, you can even drag this. I like to use the numerical way of doing things. And we want to give the midtones a nice warm feel. This is obviously the image is full of midtones rather than highlights and shadows. This is going to be the most corrected out of the two. Add an auto shoulder which just clips. Takes away any highlights if there are any in the shot. And then add a warm core. We're going to give this a nice 
fairly warm look. Okay, so this is our grid. Now, to make it extra special, we're going to bring in the green, which I live by. Drop this opacity down to 75. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and give it the good old aspect ratio. And if we have a look where the sun drops in. And just drop it a little bit more. There we go. So this is our completed grade using Magic Bullet Lux. So I hope you have found this video useful. For more filmmaking tips, head over to anytips.com. Daily notebook friendly filmmaking tips. I'll catch you again. Remember to like, subscribe, favorite, share, email, post it on Facebook, Twitter, anywhere you can. See you next week for another tutorial. Leave a comment for what tutorial you would like to see. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, I've just been going off suggestions. So it is really on you guys now. Catch you soon.